Jupiter at Night is presented before a live internet audience. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Jupiter at Night. My name is Chris. My name is Jeremy. And I got to tell you guys, uh, before we get too far into this episode, this show isn't always about space, mm. I swear. This show is about stuff we're interested in. Yeah, rad events from the day, cool topics. It happens to be space. Yeah, today, it really, I mean, well, it's Apollo, it's the Apollo landings, uh, the, the moon 41st landing. anniversary of the moon landing. Yeah, happy birthday, Apollo on the moon. So it, we're going to talk a little, it. we're going to talk a little Apollo uh, moon history, including the Apollo 11 mission mm -hmm. that uh, that did make it. There was actually um, a whole series of, of Apollo missions. I know that ran. And so this and there were a few of, that didn't make it, like the one that you might have heard of called Apollo 13. Yeah, which did make for a great movie, though. So you know, I actually is, knew the kid that played Tom Hanks' son in that movie. Really? Yeah. How did you know him? Max Slade. He was also in Three Ninjas. He was it, a friend of a friend. When his I lived last in LA. name was Slade. I know. Doesn't it sound like a super spy or something? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, especially Max Slade. Like if it was Max, Slade. like if it was you know Bob Slade. Well, that's <laughs> awesome. That's great. I was trying to think of like a Stanley Slade, but Bob Slade. That you know that sounds like so. Uh, so we'll kind of look at this as a whole celebration of the Apollo program because we're both big space nuts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so here's a couple of interesting or facts. You might you guys. say astronauts, right? Yeah, or space heads. Wait, space cases? No. Uh, so there was a total of 17 manned flights under the Apollo moniker mm -hmm. that were that went out over into space. Uh, Ten missions uh, actually went to the surface of the moon. So out of 17, only 10 of those actually landed on yeah, the moon. That's more than half. Yeah. Hmm. Is that how many actually landed or how many were sent to intentionally I don't, attempt to? I don't think that counts Apollo 13. Okay. Yeah, I think that's just landed. Uh Here's what's inter here's the interesting thing. Armstrong and Aldrin, obviously mm -hmm. everyone knows the first guys on the moon, remained on the moon for over 21 hours. Whoa. Only two of which were actually spent outside the spacecraft. The rest were just chilling in that tiny little cramped tin Playing can. Playing poker. That no, uh, I think, you know, I, I'm sure they did. They ran like a jillion tests. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't alive back then, so I don't know exactly. But um, actually, speaking of alive, the uh, I believe the Apollo program uh, started in uh, 1968 and ran to 1972. Um, so... It was done long before we, either of us yeah. were on this planet. But exactly. It's one of those things that growing up now after it's occurred, mm -hmm. it's one of those things I would have loved to have been Well, we for. talked about this on a previous episode, that we as humans have not actually been to the surface of the moon within your and my lifetime. Right. That's interesting to me. And we've helped, we've hoped, you know, we've hoped that maybe we'd see like the first, the first uh, landing on, on uh, Mars. I'm still holding out for a colony on the moon. I think hey, it's about time we get started on that. Hey, I've got a, I loaded, I preloaded up a clip for you there. It's a... Uh, it's a comparison. You know, they, they redid the uh, Apollo moon landing uh, mm -hmm. footage. And so there's a comparison that we'll link to in our show notes that gives you uh, an example of the archived footage. Very, very hard to see. The film had degraded. And then mm -hmm. they took it and restored it in 2009. Did you hear about all of the process they had to go through with this restoration? No. Well, no, I didn't. Are you, are you ready for I'm this? I'm ready for it. NASA actually taped over the original tapes. They accidentally, they just like popped them in the VHS player. And accidentally taped Shot over. a podcast or something over yeah, it? Yeah, you know, something like we would do. <laughs> and uh, so I guess they used a, a, a series of other tapes, backup copies, and restoration effects to restore the hidden image that was still on the tape. Like the undelete command. Kind of, like going through there and piecing together by bits and pieces. A massive effort by these guys. Truly, truly respectable. Looks, it's, it's a really important piece of history to save. So. You know, I... I gotta say though, I think I prefer the, uh, um, what are those guys? The MythBusters recreation. I think it was more authentic looking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that that MythBusters thing was cool. I I also have here a, a shot of the the uh, lunar module, yeah. which is just epic looking in scope. Just a just a oh, there's beast. an astronaut there. In front yeah, of it. yeah, it's a it's a real. Uh, they took it there, and uh, I mean, just yeah, you don't see so you cool. Don't frequently see the actual size comparison there. To right, the exactly, yeah. exactly. You know, it's it's a it's a big mother, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you got to fit a few different guys inside, and, and you got to have the booster rocket and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So very cool. Congratulations! <laughs> An awesome piece of history. And today, uh, which we haven't said the date yet, it is uh, July twentieth. Twentieth. Yes. So there you go. Two thousand ten. Yeah. <laughs> now this next story is along the same space line. Uh, it's uh, but we're now we're looking to the future. It's it's yep moving forward. Tell me about this one, dude. Uh, Obama told NASA to go out and build him a giant rocket. Yeah, in fact, he even wants him to land uh, on 
An asteroid? Yeah. It's well, pretty this, intense. That particular plan, the asteroid landing by 2025, has been actually around for a couple of years now. That's been a goal that they've had in yeah. mind. But it's just kind of been like, yeah, we're planning to do that. Yeah, he you said, know, someday well, he we'll said, get around he to said, it. I want to see astronauts on an asteroid by 2025. Mm-hmm. And so their general idea was, yeah, we'll get, we'll start building like a rocket around twenty fifteen. They were, yeah, they were thinking there's going to be some sort of hopeful, hopefully a breakthrough in some kind of technology, and so we're just gonna, you know, we know the president wants to do this, so we'll take care of all of the, uh, you know, uh, logistical things like training and stuff like that, and then you know we'll just kind of get that rocket built real quick, like. Mm-hmm. Uh, that kind of got uh, through the Senate, and they didn't like that very much. No, the senators basically said. Don't want to wait. Yeah. Let's do it now. Their quote was, if you always wait for new technology to be developed first, you'll never build anything. Yeah. Hmm. So their idea is basically we don't need to wait for new technology to come so that this is like going to be a massive space age rocket. We just right. need to get it done. Use what you've got. Don't <sighs> wait for the iPhone 5 before you head <laughs> don't out. Wait for the- <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you know, the thing about it is uh, I personally feel like it's disrespecting the experts. Because you've got these guys whose living, whose job, whose entire existence it is to know everything about rockets. And if mm-hmm. they're saying, wait till 2015, we can build it cheaper, better, faster, longer, you where know, does the a, sediment get there's off? There's a reason that a lot of people consider rocket scientists some of the smartest people in the world. Because they are. Mm. You know? Well, I guess the other aspect of this is there is some truth to the if you always are waiting, you'll just end up never building well and i think a lot and you know honestly a lot of a lot of folks in the senate i would even venture to say a majority were probably around during the previous space race maybe not in government but they they remember that it took a lot of pushing yeah. from the government yeah to get that ball rolling well and if you really dig into the history of the whole space program and stuff there's so many other benefits as a country that we got from that that mm-hmm. are you would have not been able like to velcro <laughs> You would not have been able to foresee. Uh, ex- you would not have known Velcro would have been a hit. Right? Yeah, I know. So you would, they made it to solve a, a problem. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's nuts that. So while yeah, it is a lot of money. It's 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 pushing a certain technology forward. It's pushing a certain uh, halo effect forward as well. Yeah. So uh, this technology in general has a, a reason loss. to progress rather than just for the sake of progressing technology. Right. Right. You have to identify what needs to be progressed in order to progress it. And, I th- and so maybe there is an overall bigger picture here the Senate is taking. Uh, this hasn't gone to the House yet, so this isn't uh, an, in effect yet. No. But the uh, the idea is it's going to come down almost like a law to NASA. Build a big freaking rocket. That could also help with the uh, the current economy. I mean, theoretically, if you start developing or needing all these new technologies and new uh, methods for space travel, pardon me, um, <laughs> then that could, in theory, maybe create some new jobs, the chat room new fields. You know, we do Jupiter at Night Live every night. Yes, we do. 9 p.m. Pacific over at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash live. Yeah. When the, what the chat room refers to as the Jeremy Copter arrives on time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes the Jeremy Copter has to be filled up. So uh, the chat room uh, rightly points out, though, that if it wasn't for expenditures on space programs in the past, we might not have Tang today. That's true. And, and I love Tang. You I, love Tang. I got Tang in my cupboard right now. So you have to consider the Tang the Tang effect. Yeah. Um, anyways, I think we'll leave it at that, but I'd love to hear people's comments on the space program. Do you consider the travel uh, to space, the building of these rockets, is this something that is the best use for the public's tax dollars? Are you cool with that? There are some very real reasons to get off this planet. Yeah. If you think about it, especially... Recently, or should we focus our time and money on making our planet more survivable? I think that you can do one and the other at the same time. Um, especially, especially like um, researching survival techniques in less than ideal environments. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. good example. This actually segues really well to another story I had set aside here. Okay. In there are places in the Caribbean where beneath the water. Yeah, this is pretty creepy. There are these it? caves, and because it's salt water, so, um, separating the the, this uh, I think it separates fresh water from yeah, so there's, air. There's actually air an, pockets. These air pockets, because they're separated by salt water, do not get oxygen oxygenated. Right. They're actually just nitrogen, I think, primarily, or chlorine, or. And I know there's also some uh, in in these underwater caves. There's because of that separation. There's actually some fresh water in there too. Mm-hmm. Now uh, you pointed me to this story because what they think that they could use these freshwater caves uh, as a possible. Um, sneak peek at what alien life uh, life terrains might be. They've done it's a not lot, like life forms of people, but like the planets. Right. Well, obviously they will be somewhat based on earthbound life forms, but the 
biospheres that develop in these non-oxygen atmospheres are completely alien. And mm. in fact, no two from these several caves that they've found, no two are identical. This this is what's really wild. Yeah, they've they've gone in. Uh, they've gone in and and we've got some pictures of a scuba diver who goes in and he takes samples. And they go down there, they get these micro sample, these microbiology samples, mm -hmm. and then they bring them all back to the laboratory and they sit down and they say, yeah, they don't match. They're they're completely they're completely foreign life and they're completely separate from each other. They didn't evolve from each other. Right. They comp amazing. It's it's a popular it's a popular Star Trek theme, right? Look, this is an M class planet. It's just like Earth. They have a a <laughs> coexistent development. This is almost what these things are doing. And so they're saying yeah. they can look at this kind of development and say, yeah, we could see that happening on another world. It gives it gives the space program some ideas of what they might potentially encounter in alien environments. And yeah. I think that is awesome that we can do that type of research here on our own planet. And uh, maybe that is one area that, that space spending could be spent elsewhere. We don't know much about the deep, 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 deep it's sea. Sea quest, dude. Yeah. Sea quest has a point. So, it I is, mean, the sea is the final frontier. If we were to make that development choice rather than space, I might be able to get behind that. They both seem that, pretty, pretty wild, pretty far out there. I yeah. kind of want to hear what the commenters have to say in the audience, so mm -hmm. maybe you guys can leave us a little feedback on this episode. I'd like to see what people think, because I personally, my belief is that we should at least explore our immediate uh, uh, solar system. You know, get out there, get to Mars. I'm not necessarily one of those send a man to Mars. Mm. I'm kind of more, I'm okay with robots for now, but I'd like, like to, robots, yeah. I'd like to build towards being able to have, I don't know, a hotel on Mars. I know that sounds stupid. But the whole idea is, is we just keep growing. We just keep using this place up. And I know it's a far out there crazy solution to, do, to that problem. Mm -hmm. But it is, that is the scope of the problem. Or maybe even perhaps not even population centers on places like that. But how about a robotic mining facility that can help us out with natural resource needs? That, if there was a like cheap that. way to deliver those resources. And that's the difficult yeah, thing. Yeah, and yeah, that's where course. Obama said, send somebody to an asteroid by 2025 because we want to mine it. Yeah. If you could, if you could eff effectively and cheaply get a resource from something like that, or maybe it was ultra valuable, mm -hmm. that might work. The only thing I could really, I mean, uh, sending somebody to Mars, it's got to be like one of these things where the technology's there, we can do it, and then it's this long-term greenhouse I, effect that we can accomplish. I got to point out that many people still believe that life, maybe not like beyond single cell organisms, but life probably at one time existed on Mars. Um, and then, so it, theoretically, if it fossilized and stuff, there's, there's oil. Oh. You know? Yeah. I mean... If so it was widespread life forms. So we could go cause oil spills over at Mars. Exactly. Yeah. But there's no water to spill it in. So plus, right? That we know of. Maybe <laughs> oh, there's frozen water. Unless they activate the, the alien artifacts under the ground. You right. Know, the, the, uh, Which come up, warm up, melt the water, and then restore Mars back to its perfect, right. perfect natural balance in like 15 mm -hmm. minutes. It's pretty impressive technology. It was faster than that because he was outside. Remember, he rolled down the mountain and he was dying, and then the, the gas came out. Wow, that was really him. fast. Yeah. yeah. Boy, they are advanced. Terraforming like that. So we should be able to towards that. Some ice. <laughs> yeah, get some ice. Get a few hot roddy things. Get a guy outside falling down a hill. You're set. And if we never go there, we will never get a chance to do that's that. That's right. At least that's our idea here, at Jupiter Night. But maybe you could leave your own idea. And it's correct because it's on the internet. I'm gonna stand by that theory for now. Okay. For now, until okay. I'm proven otherwise. So right. in order to prove me otherwise, you got to go to Mars. Oh, okay. get your ass to Mars. Now, if you want to get down to something that's a little more down to earth, nothing more down to earth. <laughs> down than, to earth, right? You like it? <laughs> no. Oh, nothing more down to earth than football. So go over to JupiterBroadcasting.com and check out the first episode of Northwest Goofballs. It is a podcast all about football. They know their stuff. They are so geeky. You got Justin. Ryan and Dan, and they geek out on football. It's a great show, Northwest mm -hmm. Goofballs. Go to jupiterbroadcasting.com. The first episode just came out. All right. Okay, everyone. I think that wraps up tonight's episode of Jupiter Night. We're back tomorrow night live. <laughs>